15 years ago, this was one of the very first devices I ever received as a beta tester. Now, how did I get this? Well, at Google I.O., Sundar, who I didn't really know much about, who is now the CEO of Google, introduced a new product that they were going to call Chrome OS. And with that, they wanted to get beta testers to test it out. During that day, they had a website that said, hey, fill out this form to receive a free Google Chrome sticker. I love Google Chrome at the time, so I, of course, filled out the form. And what do you know, this showed up instead. I somehow didn't get a sticker. My brother got the sticker and this, but not me. Anyway, I'm not holding that against them because I received this awesome device. This is the CR48, the very first Chrome OS test device. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is I wanna show you that even 15 years later, this thing is still working. Look at this, it turns on. I'm able to browse and navigate. So I do have a message here saying, your final update, your Chromebook has received its last automatic update. Chromebooks receive 10 years of automatic updates, which keep your software secure and speedy. Your device has received its final automatic update, but you have options for the next step. So that's so cool, a device that is going to have that software, the latest software for 10 full years. And after that, it still functions. Down here, it says that I do have the option to continue without using updates. So I can keep browsing the web on this, no problem. It's gonna be just a little bit slower, but still works, or I can recycle the laptop. So Chrome OS, I've been using for 15 years. I was one of the earliest people to have it, and it was such an awesome thing to have at the time. Now that all happened in December of 2010, and then it was the next February when I started my first YouTube channel. So maybe testing out a product influenced me to go and start testing out more and more products. Now for fun, let's go ahead and do a quick speed test here. You can see how this works. Now, the device itself, I do have it plugged in. That was the first thing to fail, the battery. So plugging it in still works fine. Um, everything else seemed to work. The hardware is getting a little bit old, but here we're still getting around 73 megabits per second. So still a capable device to browse the internet. Now, over the years, Google improved Chrome OS. They came out with all kinds of devices. You could buy all kinds of third-party devices. Here I have the Pixelbook Go, which Google had sent to me, and this was one of my favorites. It was so good. It just did everything so quick on the web and was the best go-to device for writing down things using Google Docs and all of that. The only th reason I couldn't use a Chromebook is for video editing. Everything else could be done on here. Well, Google this week sent me to New York City where they showed off the new Chromebook Plus 14 from Lenovo. So this is the latest generation of Chrome OS on the latest hardware from Lenovo. They're no longer making their own devices, but others are producing hardware that has the latest Chrome OS. Now, I think this is such a productive device. There's so many things to talk about. Let's get started. So here is the Chromebook Plus 14. On the left side here, we have a USB-C port with a full USB-A. Great to see that's still alive. And on the right side, you have a USB-C port with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now the device itself weighs 2.5 pounds, which seems like a lot, but it actually was incredibly light. And then you have this really nice screen. I believe it was 14 inches. And then it is actually only 0.6 inches thin. Now there are actually two different models you'll be able to get. You have this model here that is going to retail for the $749, but it includes the 256 gigabytes of internal storage, a fingerprint scanner, the 16 gigabytes of RAM, and then it comes in this cool silver. There will be another model that I believe is $649, $49. It has a darker finish and it has 128 gigabytes of storage, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and then it does not have the fingerprint scanner. Now, the good news is both of these are running the MediaTek Compagnio Ultra, which is able to produce 50 tops of data processing. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but that's a lot of data that is able to run with. So this means that compared to other Chromebook Plus devices, it's 32% faster and it has a lot of data running locally on the device. And then it also has 44% more runtime, which is twice as much as previous models, giving you at least 17 hours of battery life to browse the web, watch movies, whatever you wanna do. That's a great battery life. Some of my Windows laptops I used in the past, it seemed like after a couple of years, I would only get about 30 to 45 minutes of battery life. So having a long-term device that's going to be able to last much longer is great to see. The Chromebook Plus 14 is capable of doing two outputs. So you can use the USB-C on both ends to output to a display. It has Wi-Fi 7 built into it. So it's gonna be the latest generation of Wi-Fi standards. And then it's the first Chromebook to have Dolby Atmos speakers. So you have the two speakers here on the right and left side. Now I did do an audio test with those speakers and it sounded pretty good just watching a few YouTube videos and it had some good bass to it. It was a crowded environment. So it's really hard to judge at this point. You but Superman? Did you consult with the president? 
but overall, first impressions were great. Now this will be available from Lenovo as well as Best Buy. I'll leave links down in the description below. Now, not only did they introduce the new hardware, but they also introduced new software features that will be available. Now there are two unique features to the Chromebook Plus 14. First of which is smart grouping. So let's say you're browsing the web and you're trying to research a topic. So um, here we were searching up the sun. So we had uh, Wikipedia open, we had other websites searching the sun, and then we had a few other tabs open searching about squirrels and other random things. Well, when you go to your tabs menu where it's going to show all the different tabs you have open or the different windows, it then automatically populated this smart group at the bottom showing that there were four tabs that could be included about the sun. When we clicked on that, it automatically populated all of those into a new desktop for your Chromebook. So you can have multiple desktops here and then all the ones about the sun were then added into here. So it made it so much easier to then keep track of what I was working on versus having all these random tabs at the top. So I was able to then go in there and research the sun and you can easily swipe back and forth between your different desktops that are open. Now this was so cool and this can only be done on the Chromebook Plus 14 because of the processing power that it has on the device to understand all that is going on because you might have a lot of tabs open about a bunch of different topics. Now the next feature is on-device editing. So you previously have seen how you can do some AI editing within Google Photos and some other things like that, but you're now able to do that right within the Chromebook. You don't need to add another app or go on the web to do this. It's all done in the gallery app. So going in here, I had a picture of the Statue of Liberty that was there and I wanted to expand how much uh, space was around the picture. So I was able to easily expand it and it did this with AI right on the device. So now I have a much wider picture, easier to work with, but there's still a problem with the picture. We have this Getty Images logo on it. So then I use the erase function to be able to erase that. And it was all done right there. Pretty easy, so great to have those features on the device. And those two things are only on the new Chromebook. Now the new Chromebook also has a new quick insert key. Now this is unique to it, but the feature will be coming to other Chromebooks. You'll just need to use a different set of commands and we'll talk about that key and all it can do in just a bit. Now let's talk about a bunch of the other Chrome OS features that have incorporated AI and all of its capabilities deep within Chrome OS that will be coming to other Chromebooks as well. First up, we have select to search with lens. This is very similar to circle to search that you have on your Android phone. But as how this works is if you're browsing something, let's say I'm watching a YouTube video here about the Echo Spot, and I want to be able to search and learn more. So all I need to do is hold down the G button. You can also do this in a few different ways I'll talk about. But when you hold down the G button, it then gives you the option to drag a certain part of your screen or highlight with a box to search that. So I highlight it and then it automatically populates information about what it found. And so it's kind of like Google Lens all right there where it can then do a further deep dive. You can also add to the search query if you want to search just eBay. You could type in eBay or other things where you can narrow down your search. Now you can also do this by going into the apps menu and tapping on the search icon there. And then you'll be able to have the same option. Or when you take a screenshot with the screenshot button, you can then highlight an area and search um, as well. So then it's gonna do those same populations and make it easier to browse the web and find things that you are looking for. Next there is text capture. So this is done very similar to how we were searching before. So let's say you have something online that you want to copy a bunch of data. So I have a receipt here and I wanna copy this and paste it in Google Docs. So if we go ahead and select the box with select to search, it's then automatically going to give you a pop-up at the top to add to Google Docs. So I click that, it automatically takes all the data, highlights it, copies it, it and then creates a new Google Doc based on all that data. I know I've wanted to have something like this for a long time where it can easily take info and import it into Google Docs. Now, another item you may want to use this for is let's say somebody sends you an invitation in your email about a party that's going on. Well, there wasn't a calendar invite or anything like that. So we need to manually add this to our calendar before we forget. So we can do the select to search again. And then when we do that, it's automatically going to populate the event, the time, the date, all into your calendar without you needing to do anything. So just to click away, you're able to then see it in your calendar and then you can create the event and you can make any adjustments you need to before you hit save. So I love how that's all directly integrated into this same select to search. Now, depending on what you're searching, there are going to be more smart actions. So here at the top, you can see that different things populate. This is where you can see the copy text and import it into Google Docs or other things like that. So you're gonna have all kinds of different things that you can do by selecting data and copying it and moving it in other places that's easier to format um, than just 
having the picture there. Now, next let's talk about the quick insert key. So this is actually really cool. This can be used on any website. It doesn't have to be Google Docs. It can be anywhere that you're using the web, but we're gonna start here in Gmail. So let's say that I am typing out an email for maybe a pool party. So we're having a party of ourselves. I want to then add a picture of a pool or the beach or something like that. So all I need to do is tap the quick insert key and it will pop up a prompt that I can then simply type in what I want. So here I want to make a picture about a pool party and it will then automatically generate different images from AI that I can use. So it's going to create those. I can then quickly insert it right into my email and there I have created this beautiful email. So then another thing that you can use this for is maybe you're looking for help while you are writing out a document. So I'm talking about my experience about going to the Statue of Liberty. So I can use the quick insert key and easily add the picture that I had created because it's in the device. It's already on my computer. It can add that quickly. Then I had the option to help me write. So I wanted to type out an experience I had when I visited the Statue of Liberty myself. So I could then add a few keywords in the prompt and then it could automatically help me write a better story for that experience. So it was great how that was done with quick insert key. And there's a ton of other things that you can do right here. You can see some of those props. You can easily add other Google Docs you've been working on to link them right there. So really cool to have that functional key. It is the caps lock key, so you're not gonna use that that much. It's great that you now have quick insert key as well. One more thing you can do with selecting text on screen is called simplify. So if you're ever doing homework with your child, you know that there's some things that you, they may find in the science book or whatever that's a little too complicated. So with Simplify, you can select it and then it will take the information there and explain it a little more or explain it like I'm five years old so that I have a better understanding of what it's actually talking about. I know this is gonna be really helpful helping a teenager with homework and hopefully they also add this with math. I don't know if it can do math, but that would be very cool as well. So you can simplify it and here it kind of just copied some of the info, but then you'll see it broke it down a little bit more. So it was explained more detail um, so it's not necessarily making it shorter, but it's making it more detailed so me as a unsmart human can understand. So that was really cool. Now, next they really talked about how Gemini is built into this thing. So you're also gonna have Gemini on device as well as Gemini on the cloud. So um, I don't know the specifics there, but it's gonna be seamless. You won't know either and it will just work great. So you now have Gemini 2.5 Pro that you can use on here where it's gonna help you code and other things like that. You'll have Gemini Live. You'll be able to talk to it and ask Gemini different questions to help you um, with whatever you're working on. You have Google VO where it's creating these different movies that you can create all with AI. I haven't played with that too much, but we'll see how that goes. And then you have Imagine 4 where you can create these really beautiful images. So fully integrated into Chrome OS, you're gonna have Gemini, which is going to be great. So those are all the new features that are coming to Chromebook Plus and Chrome OS itself. And then they talked about how last year they introduced that if you do buy a new Chromebook, you will get one year of Google One that includes a lot of these features, as well as two terabytes of Google Drive storage, Notebook LM, where you can upload all kinds of documents and it can create podcasts. It's really fun to play with. Um, so you'll be able to have that and all kinds of things if you purchase the Chromebook for one year free. So that's a $240 value. I've been using that uh, just because I do pay for that regularly and it's been fun to have all of that and all those features built in. So you're going to get that if you pick up one of the new Chromebook Plus 14s. And lastly, as for gaming, they talked about how this is going to be able to run the top 10 Android games available. So built into Chrome OS, you do have the Google Play Store where you can run all the Android apps. So they talked about how you'll be able to go and download Minecraft, you can download Roblox and all the other games that you might wanna play. And then I even was like, hey, the last time I used a Chromebook, I wanted to do some video editing, but there were no apps available. Well, now you can actually download LumaFusion, Adobe Rush, and a few other video editing apps right on the Chromebook. And with that extra storage, I think that will be super handy to have. I might have to try editing a video fully on that to see how it goes, but the full Play Store is there. So you'll be able to do pretty much everything that you would want right on the Chromebook Plus 14. Now, one of the big things they really wanted to highlight at this event is how Chromebooks are laptops and how they can do laptop things. I use my phone for a lot of my computing day to day, but it just can't do everything I need it to. I need a bigger screen and a Chromebook is a great device for that. Most likely you go onto your computer and you browse the web, the Chromebook is gonna do that best. It has everything, it syncs your bookmarks, it has all that stuff built in, it's secure, automatically updates, great device to have with you wherever you go. So this is going to be the best device 
for doing laptop things. And of course, we'll test it out further as I get one here. So if you have any further questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna pick up one of your own, you can check out the link down in the description. Thanks again to Google for sending me out for this awesome event. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.